I keep my gum, gum paste like tightly wrapped in plastic so that they don't, you know, dry because gum paste dry really quick. And um, I condition it by kneading it between my fingers if it's a small amount like what I have right now. And if your gum paste is a little bit too tight, um, you can mix in a little bit of uh, glycerine to it to make it a little bit looser or softer for you. But I like my gum paste really nice and tight like this because it dries quicker. So I'm, to start off, I'm going to take some white gum paste, put it on my vinyl mat. Then I'm going to roll that gum paste so that the bottom part is thicker than the rest, like so. As you can see, this is thicker and it gradually goes thinner towards the end. And I'll take the skinnier uh, veiner that I have on my set and the skinnier cutter. So I'm going to cut that right on the center. And there, there's a line and your veiner so that you can align the bottom and the tip of your cutter. There we go. I'm going to take uh, my number 26 gauge wire. I don't need to hook it. I'm just going to brush it a little bit with my gum glue right on the tip. And then I'm going to take my petal, hold it upside down with my forefinger and thumb so that when I insert the wire on the thicker part, I can feel where that wire is going. As you can see, it doesn't poke through either side. And I insert it about a quarter of an inch deep into the gum paste. You don't need it anywhere deeper than that because if you try to dry it bent like this and you have the wire all the way here, there's a tendency of the wire to come out. So I'm going to go and take my ball tool, the smaller end of my ball tool, and try to thin that out. Just the edges. And as you can see, I'm holding my ball tool like a pen. And I'm just thinning those petal. You don't want the ball tool to be like right in the middle of your petal because it will erase all the veining that you've made on there. All right. And then I'm going to take my needle tool and starting on the mat, you see the tip of my, my needle tool is right on the mat, I'm going to go and redraw that line, fold the petal like so. And then I'm going to take my drying rack, I'm using a medium I'm using a medium cone uh, flower former. I'm just going to insert that in so that it dries in shape. You can just leave this to dry overnight. And then for the outer petal, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to roll it just the same way as I rolled the first one. This time I'm going to use the wider uh, veiner that is in my Ulstrom area set. And also the wider petal cutter. So you see when I am um, cutting my Ulstrom area, I press, or when I use the cutter, any kind of cutter that you're using, I press it downwards and then give it a little bit of shape. That way I get a clean cut without any of the, any of the fuzziness right there. Or sometimes when your cutter has a lot of gum paste that are stuck at the bottom, because sometimes the gum paste gets stuck, all you got to do is wipe a little bit of vegetable shortening onto the uh, cutter side or where you cut the gum paste in so that the gum paste will not stick to it. 
So again, I'll take a piece of number 26 wire. Hold my petal upside down and insert my wire in. So after I insert my wire, I make sure that I pitch it right at the bottom. And if it's like a square, because you see how the tip of this is square, you don't really want that to remain square. So just squeeze that in so it, you round that a little bit. So you know that when the, uh, the gum face dries that your stem wire is not going to come out. So don't forget to pinch it. So now I'm going to take my ball tool again, and again, I'm just going to thin outline the edge of my petal. And really, Alstroemeris don't really have much movement on the petal. They're pretty much just dried like backwards. But the petal itself doesn't really have much ruffling, so I'm not going to put so much pressure on that on my bottle so that the petal does not really ruffle as much. And I'm going to take my needle tool and again draw that center line downward. Fold my petal in half and dry that on my medium uh, flower former. So you just let those dry overnight. Um, you need to make three of the wider petals and three of the uh, narrower petals to make a flower. So it depends on how many flowers you're doing. You're probably doing like three or four, so just multiply that by three. So I'm going to take, I'm going to use a white floral tape just because I wanted to dust that stamen with a uh, light green and um, floral wires only come in deeper green and I don't really want to uh, use a dark green on my flower on, or on my stamen. So I will take um, half of the uh, stamen of the medium. I'm using a white medium stamen. Um, as you can see, stamens always comes in uh, two, there are two heads and one stem, so I just cut it in half, so I end up with this. And then I'm using a number 26 white uh, floral wire and a half width floral tape, so I'm just going to take that and stick it in. And then I'm just going to wrap that with my floral tape to secure it. So you need to make uh, five per flower, five uh, stamens, and the Alstroemeria stamen is actually kind of like bending upwards, so I just run my finger and my thumb, my forefinger and my thumb, and just basically try to bend that wire to an angle. And then I'm going to arrange it so that one stamen is actually sticking out farther than the rest, because that's how it usually is. So I'm just going to do two here and two here. It's kind of arranged like a finger in your hand. And there we go. So I'm going to take this and tape the base of it with my floral tape. So I'm going to do like three or four rounds. There we go. So I'm going to take my petal and I'm going to dust the center of my petal with a little bit of light green. I would say apple green and dust the center with that. And I'm working on the narrower petal. Alright, and then I'm going to take my brush and use Old Rose 
petal dust and kind of scrape my brush from the side going to the center. And as you can see, I leave a little bit of white on my petal. That way I get that, that, that depth of color, kind of like how the real flower is. And that's what I'm going to do with this other petal as well. Just dust it with a combination of buttercup yellow and some apple green. I just love using this palette dust because it doesn't get all over the place. It just does it for me. Again, I'm going to use some old rose pink and just dust the edge of my petal. And you can use you can use um, pomelo orange or even like burgundy, really. And I know for sure you've seen this flower in the supermarket. This is very common at the supermarket here in, in Southern California. But from where you are, I know for sure that you've seen this in like Kroger's or any supermarket that sells flowers will have Ulster Marius there. So you can um, look at that flower and take that as a reference for whatever color you wanted to use for your flower. All right, so after I'm done with that, I'm going to take a, a deeper red. I'm using, um, I believe this is Bordeaux, and just add that layer of, of deep red onto my petal. same way here. And really I'm just trying to touch up on the side, mostly on the side so I can still see that old rose pink that I put in there the first time. So after that's done, I'm going to take a little bit of vodka and a little bit of my chocolate brown dust. You can also use gel color this gel color is a lot less expensive for, to use for painting, so I, I would use that too. And I would paint dashes. Going up the narrow petal. And really, it's just random da dashes. It doesn't need to be perfect or anything. It's just the dashes that Ostromeria come with. There we go. And as if that's not enough, I would take my deep green brush and use a forest green petal dust and just dust that very tip of my of my uh, petal and just dust that you can also use emerald green there we go isn't that wonderful color they're just very vibrant and you can use that to dust the uh, base of your petal too and that's what I'm going to use for this one as well, just the very tip. There we go. 
Also, I will take that stamen and brush that with, again, a combination of apple green and yellow. Petal dust. See, this way I can control the color of my stamen, whereas if I used the green um, wire and the green floral tape, then I'm just stuck with that color. This way I can dust it with whatever color that I wanted. And for this instance, just apple green and buttercup yellow. You can use whatever shade of yellow that you may probably have. And then for a more mature flower, normally, that tip that sticks out is normally brown. So we'll do the same way here. So I'm just going to paint that with a little bit of brown. I would take a half width floral tape, stretch it to release the adhesive. I'm going to take all of my dried up and painted petals. Then I'll start with the, uh, the narrower petal. So I would take the tip of my floral tape and um, secure that with my forefinger, my right forefinger. I'll take my left hand and wrap the petal twice so that it's nice and secure. I'll take another petal and I'm starting with the narrow uh, petal here. I'm just making sure that it's nice and level with the first petal that I put in. Oops. And I'm going to wrap that to where those two petals are so that the wire is not showing. Take the last one and put it right here. And I make sure that the bottom of the petals are all aligned. Again, I'm wrapping it twice so that none of the wire is showing. And then I'll take the wider petal and place it in between the first two petals or the first two narrower petals that I put in. Wrap it twice. And then next. one. In between the first two petals, or in between the narrower petals, is where I'm going to position that. Sometimes the wires have a mind of its own, you know. It doesn't want to stay where you wanted it to stay. There we go. But you know, you just tell that wire who's boss. There. There we go. And so I'm going to take the remainder of my floral tape and just basically wrap the rest of these exposed um, wires right here so it will just look as if it's just one stem. Oops. And 
and when you're wrapping your floral tape or your floral wire you have to hold your your um, floral tape at an angle so that it goes up without it getting to be too thick and there's your finished Alstroemeria isn't that that's pretty easy to do very rewarding very colorful you can use this for any type of special location cakes or bridal or wedding cakes this is the one that I did with um, some green and, and tropical orange color very nice Thank you.